Our topic today, here's a strong sign he's serious about you and he's committed to you. And you got to wait till the end because I'm going to share with you this one little sign. Now, I know many of you know I've shot dozens and dozens of videos covering all kinds of clues that a man is ready to commit. But the one I'm going to share today might be a really great sign. And you have to tell me at the end if you agree to see if someone is actually serious about you. Now, quite frankly, we've talked about how you can tell when a man isn't that into you after meeting you. He starts acting flaky, which is rather obvious when a man starts to breadcrumb, when a man starts to, certainly you've experienced the type of man who most, well, I'm assuming you might but experience the kind of man that came on strong, certainly driven from a biological perspective, and that the minute it starts to get somewhat serious, he started to pull away emotionally. Okay. Now, I want to give some validity why this happens. Okay or not validity, I want to give some explanation. This is not an excuse, but I want to give an explanation. The thing is, we human are creatures. We are animals. And to some degree, we are driven biological. When you've heard the phrase, men love the hunt, men love the chase, that's a biological need. Now, when you're hearing this, you're assuming that this has to do with the Neanderthals that were chasing buffalo, I don't know when woolly mammoths came into or were last in existence. I guess it would be the Ice Age. But then when they were chasing the animal to get food, okay, somehow that narrative has been turned into a man that loves the hunt and chase relates to a relationship. And I'm here to say men don't go running around going, I'm hunting for a relationship. I'm hunting for commitment. Men don't do that. Certainly from a biological perspective, men are competitive. We are driven biologically to want to be physically intimate with you. We're certainly driven in, a, in the sense of survival, driven by money oftentimes, so those things can relate to hunt or chase. But I'm here to just make you aware that it's not that men are hunting a serious relationship, but we will hunt you physically from that perspective. But this is why it might wait, might be behoove it, might behoove you to build a level of trust with someone before you're physically intimate, because by building trust, a person is less likely to be flaky, to breadcrumb, to disappear. Build that level of friendship, because a friend won't ghost you. A friend won't disappear. They might have. They might have to bite their teeth and or bite their lip and have that difficult conversation with you. But a friend usually doesn't ghost you. But if you didn't build that level of trust early on, they might be flaky. Now, a lot of men aren't capable of a relationship. Their life is in chaos. They're broken emotionally. And sadly, many of you turn into his therapist in the dating dynamic. If you find yourself bonding at an emotional level, because you're listening to somebody go through problems that might be that they're not capable of a relationship. Now, you might be asking me, what makes a man ready for a relationship, particularly a serious relationship? I want you to write this down, okay? His desire, his capacity, and his vision for a significant relationship exceeds the fears and pains or past hurts. Fears, pains, past hurts. Their desire. Now, here's the thing. Someone might desire a relationship beyond their fear and pain. Many of you desire a relationship beyond your fear and pain, but their, but their capacity to be in a relationship is below that because the fear and pain weighs them down. Now, for example, fear and pain. Somebody went through a contentious divorce. Going through a contentious divorce or just going through a divorce in general is a very emotionally traumatic experience. I don't believe enough studies have been placed on the emotional effects of when somebody ends a significant relationship or worse, when, some, when one person ends a treasured relationship and the other person didn't want it to end, there is an emotional, um, conse not consequence, an emotional um, 
collateral damage that happens when one person wants to end a relationship. The other person, it feels like a loss. It feels like a death. Or excuse me, it's a loss, but it can feel like death. And there's a natural grieving process that must occur. And another sign that a person isn't capable is that they have serious issues in their lives. They have childhood wounds or adult traumas, as I said before, that makes it very difficult. If you're not familiar with the book, The Hoffman Process, this is a deep dive into healing. The most common childhood wound from one or both of our parents is we weren't loved properly. We, we might have been abandoned. We might have been rejected. We might have been, we might have had an overbearing parent. We might have had a physically abusive parent. We might have had an emotionally abusive parent. We might have had one parent who was uh, never around. And all of this has emotional effects on us that makes our capacity to be in relationship below our fears and our pains. And then remember I said, desire, capacity, and vision. And we're going to talk about this in a second, because a man who is serious about commitment with you, a man who's serious about relationship, he shows up completely different. He has a vision of wanting a life partner. He has a vision of wanting a life partner. Now, let's lean into this vision for a moment. Folks, my channel is for those of you that seek a life partner. If you're just looking for a casual relationship, if you're looking for friends with benefits, if you want a situationship, if you're not ready for something serious as a life partner, in other words, your, your desire, your capacity, and your vision, then this advice may not be you know, exactly what you're looking for. I'm here to talk about those who want a life partner. And I know many of you don't want to be a nurse or a purse. And I know many of you have been hurt from past relationships. Maybe you've been married a couple times and you don't want to get married. That's okay. You don't have to be married to have a life partner. You don't even have to live together to have a life partner. But I will tell you, those are pretty significant areas of commitment when you choose to either live with someone or get married, particularly for those of us in midlife, if you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, do you want to be in your 80s still dating somebody? Do you want to still be driving back and forth? At some point, you got to ask yourself, if you're 50 years old dating someone, do you want to go the distance with someone? That's what I want to lean into. So here's a couple signs, but I'm going to share with you my strong sign, okay, in a moment. He makes you a priority in his life. Certainly someone who invests regular time wanting to spend, or, um, who's spending regular time with you, they make you a priority in their life. In other words, their work or their other obligations don't exceed the amount of time that they want to spend with you. They make you a priority. They cancel some, maybe they plan, they cancel around a golf with friends. Not that I advocate that you should abandon your friends in a relationship. But maybe they cancel plans to play golf with a friend because they want to spend time with you. That's a, that's a really good sign. By the way, is this sinking in? Is this resonating? This is my coffee mug. Please forgive my slur. He makes, makes you a priority in his life. Okay, now folks, many of you might have important things in your life. Some of you might still be raising children. Some of you might have a demanding professional life. But the reality is, is whether you're a man or a woman that have family demanding professional life, if you do want a life partner, then making putting them at a pedestal of importance. Now, I'm here to say your professional life is important to you. Your family, maybe your children are important to you. Maybe your physical health or exercise is important to you. All of those things are important. I believe it becomes very dangerous when we put something at such a high importance that everything else is less than, particularly in the form of a relationship, because I like how Esther Perel says the following, the quality of our life is predicated by the quality of our relationships. And so making this person a priority as important as everything else is a great sign that they're serious and want to commit to you. And I'm 
Remember, you got to wait for this last one, okay? So stick around. I know you might have lost interest at this point. If you haven't, stick around to hear this last one because I think it's kind of cute, okay? Number two, he actively tries to help you in your life. He actively tries to help you. Maybe it's financial advice. Maybe it's coming over to put up a TV uh, in your living room or your bedroom or something like that. Maybe he's... Um, that's another good way a man tries to help you in your life. Maybe you're moving. And he goes, I'm going to come over to help you, you know, fill up boxes. Certainly when someone tries to help you in your life, when someone acts in a teammate fashion, a teammate fashion, I want you to lean into that word for a moment, teammate. Certainly when someone operates from that perspective, whether you're a man or a woman, that is a great sign that this relationship is serious and it's actually a committed type of relationship when you're physically and emotionally a teammate in a person's life or uh, physically, intellectually, certainly emotionally, being a support person if you're having a down day. Part of trying to help is to listen. I know we men try to fix things, okay? We inherently, because we don't want chaos. We want harmony. That's the reason why we try to fix things, ladies, is we don't want chaos. We want harmony. But if he actively wants to be a support person in your life, whether it's physical, intellectual, that's where they give advice maybe about money, physical as putting up the TV, and emotional as being there to hold space for you. folks. If, if you're having regular sex with someone, you have every right for an emotionally supportive relationship. If you're not familiar with the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend reading this book. Why? Because this helps develop the most important, one of the most important facets of a relationship is your emotional connection with another human being. In other words, if you want a harmonious relationship. Now, in addition, having good emotional maturity, high emotional IQ, good relationship skills lead to a more healthy, harmonious relationship. And by the way, if you haven't read this book, I'm, I'm highly recommending reading this, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Why? Because most humans have poor relationship skills, poor communication skills. They have a poor way of expressing their needs, wants, and desires in a way that can be seen, heard, and understood by somebody. And this is why I advocate reading all of these books so you can become a more evolved person. Remember I talked about desire and capacity and vision in relationship? Capacity is emotional maturity and good relationship skills is a significant part of a healthy, happy relationship. If you haven't seen um, my chart, please forgive the glare on emotional mature. Uh, this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion. I believe 20% of the population has clinical issues when it comes to emotional maturity and relationship skills. And while I say 20% is healthy, the vast majority of humans are some level dysfunctional. And I can speak from personal experience because I'm still working on being less defensive, reactive, judgmental, insecure in relationship. I think we are all a work in progress. That's why I said 20% is being generously healthy, okay? Number three, he integrates you into his life. He integrates you into his life. He wants you in his life. When a man wants you in his life, he integrates you into his life. He invites you to um, maybe your daughter is getting or maybe his daughter is getting married, excuse me, or his son. And he invites you to the wedding. He wants you to come to a work function. He wants you to meet his dear friends. He integrates you into his life. And he wants you in his life. You can see the difference when they start when this starts to occur. These are great signs that it's a strong sign. They're serious about you and they're ready to commit to you at a deeper level when they integrate you into, your li into their lives. Folks, ultimately, what do you want? What was that line? What, what did they say in the movie, The Notebook? He kept saying, Noah kept saying to Allie, what do you want? What do you want? 
What do you want? Do you want a life partner? I invite you all to answer that question for yourself. Because if you're going to make someone, if you want a life partner, you have to make this person a priority. You have to actively try to help them in their life. You have to integrate this person in your life because at the end of the day, you both believe that all in leads to a harmonious life. Being teammates with one another leads to a harmonious life. George Clooney said, life is better with company. I think life is better with all in company. Oh, George Clooney in the movie Up in the Air, excuse me, in the movie Up in the Air, George Clooney says, or his character says, life is better with company. I believe it's better with all in company, okay? People are experiencing a lot of surface level casual relationships, what I call spender relationships, not all in relationships. Those are people that believe that all in and teamwork is a significant part of a relationship. But when he says this, it's a strong sign he's serious about you. And this isn't indicative, but I think it is. When a man says to you, can I post a picture of the two of us on my social media account? Can I post a picture of the two of us? Particularly if this man is an avoidant attachment style. Men who are avoidant attachment styles oftentimes don't want to publicly share that they're in a relationship with someone because they don't believe that it's going to go the distance. When a man publicly shares a relation, shares his relationship with you on social media, that's a strong sign he's serious about you. Men who struggle with commitment, with men who struggle with intimacy, men who struggle with vulnerability, don't want to share publicly about their relationship. Now, an anxious man, and I speak from personal experience, we jump at the chance to show a picture of our partner on relationship. But chances are you're most likely if, um, you know, because we men, we anxious men want to show inclusivity, okay? But ang avoidant people oftentimes are very reluctant to publicly share about their relationship. And again, an emotionally mature man, an emotionally healthy man will make you a priority. He'll actively try to help you in your life. He'll integrate you into his life. And at the same time, if he decides to post a picture of the two of you, I'm going to say to you, for most likely, you, you know, because many of you have experienced the avoidant attachment style man. And if you're not familiar with the work of the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller to learn about this, I highly recommend it. When an avoidant man posts a picture of you publicly, there's a good, that's a strong sign he's serious about you and he wants a long-term commitment with you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what I just shared. Post a comment below. I do my, I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos and also do it on your phone as well. And lastly, if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. There's a link to follow me on Instagram to get the books I recommend, to get my dating vows. Uh, and what else? Oh, enjoy my mailing list, all that good stuff. It's all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.